I will go through everything again. So step number one is you're identifying the vertical asymptotes. All you need to do every single time is set the denominator equal to 0. And if you guys remember, vertical asymptotes, setting it equal to 0, that should be related to finding the domain, right? Because the domain was all real numbers except what makes our denominator equal to 0. So when I do that, I get x uh, minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. That means x equals 5, x equals negative 2. Are those two values that are, are those two values in your domain? No, they can't be in your domain because if you plug those values in for x, you have 0 in the denominator. Does that make sense? So those two values, since they're not a part of the domain, those are values where the graph is discontinuous. So if I was going to graph this, does everybody have this written down? If I was going to graph this function, what I do for these asymptotes is I graph a vertical dashed line. Because the graph is not going to cross those vertical asymptotes because it's not a part of the line. The other thing for you guys to understand about asymptotes is asymptotes is where the graph converge on. They converge on the asymptote. All right? The next thing, horizontal asymptote. All you need to do in the horizontal asymptote is compare the degrees of your numerator and your denominator. You can see, please write this down. Do not put your stuff away. You can see that the degree and the denominator So to determine the x-intercept, guys, you just put 0 in for y, or in this case, f of x. To find the x-intercept, you plug 0 in for y. Guys, how do you get rid of, how do you solve for this? You've got to get rid of the, this in the denominator, right? So to do that, multiply x squared minus 3x minus 10 on both sides. So to find the y-intercept, please pay attention. To find the y-intercept, you just plug 0 in for x. So you have 0 plus 1 over 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 10. Well, that's going to end up giving you um, 1 over negative 10. Please do not put anything away. I don't know why I keep on having to hear this. Because you should be writing this down rather than putting anything caring about if you leave class five seconds earlier or not. Okay, so those are your two y-intercepts. Then um, the next thing is to check for symmetry. To check for symmetry, you plug in f of negative x. Remember, if, if, if you get back the exact same function, then it's even function. It's symmetrical about the y-axis. If you get the opposite of the function, it's symmetrical about the origin, and it's an odd function. Well, I'm not going to show my work here, but I'm just going to simplify it in my head because I know I am short on a time. So when I do this, I get plus 3x minus 10. So when I plug in f of negative x, do I get back the original function? No. It's negative. Do I get back the exact opposite? No, I don't either. So there's no symmetry. Um, and then number six is going to be pick points. Now, we know that there's already two points. We know one point is negative 1, 0. And we know the other point is 1, 0, negative 1 tenth. We need to figure out what the other two points are. Um, you can plug in, what I recommend you guys do is plug in points to the left and to the right and plug them in. For instance, plug in what is f of negative 3. Plug that value in and plot it. If you have a graphing calculator, you can simply use the table function, type in your, uh, type in your function, and what you'll see is the graph looks like this. See how the graph converges on the asymptotes? Do you guys see how it all approaches the asymptotes there? That's what that graph would look like. 